this is uh, Anand Bhatt uh, from uh, Atal Incubation Center uh, of uh, Central Coffee Research Institute at a uh, coffee board, uh, Bangalore. On behalf of uh, AICCCRI CD, I uh, give a warm welcome to all the participants uh, who have uh, joined this webinar and uh, also the, uh, very importantly, the speakers uh, for today's session. Uh, we have two speakers today. Uh, Mr. Tejas Agarwal from Art Coffees and uh, Mr. Saruna Kumaran from the Bean uh, <coughs> on uh, yeah. a loop. On behalf of uh, uh, the ASCCRI, I now introduce the first speaker for today's session, that is Mr. Tejas Agarwal. Uh, Mr. Tejas Agarwal is the founder of Art Coffees. He has uh, done his BMS degree from Potar College, Mumbai. He is very passionate about coffee and always wanted to start something of his own. He had his first cold brew in January 2018 in Dubai and since then he has always wanted to do something like that in India. Uh, subsequently, he went on and worked as a barista at Third Wave Coffee Roasters to understand more about coffee. Post that, he also went uh, for a farm tour uh, for the same. After that, in January 2021, he started working on the project to make cafe-style 100% real coffee beverages in a can. And uh, he is the uh, owner of the Art Coffees which is a, a, a startup company based in Mumbai. Uh, on behalf of uh, AIC CCRI, uh, once again, I warmly welcome Mr. Tejas Agarwal and request him to start the first session for today. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anand, sir. Uh, thank, you, thank you for Coffee Board and AIC to give me, to give me, who has given me this opportunity to share my story with all the other founders and all the aspiring entrepreneurs with me and uh, yeah so i will share uh I'll, I'll first share my presentation yes sir you can share the presentation sir all right just give me one one second Yes, sir. We'll wait. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, can you tell me, guys? Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. Visible? Yes, sir. All right, sir. All right. Hi, guys. Um, uh, welcome you all to this uh, this startup uh, startup session. Uh, session. Yeah, well, today I'm going to be telling you about uh, uh, how I started my journey, what did I do, and a little more about oil coffee. So, hi, my name is Sejus Agrawal. I'm from this small town called Jalna in Maharashtra. And I have been, <clears throat> I have done my college, my bachelor's in management studies from Mumbai, Podar, uh, from Podar College. And, yeah, uh, I said. Yeah, so I was uh, I studied in Jalna in uh, for, for my schooling was done in Jalna. Then I started I did my bachelor's in Podar College in Matunga in Mumbai. And um, after after I did my uh, college from Podar, I then I went on pursuing for all coffees right after I worked with my dad for some time and then went on to do all coffees, which is also my first startup. So uh, I'll tell you something about oil coffee. First of all, how the idea came to me. So oil coffee. So I have been a very passionate guy about uh, coffee in the college time as well. I used to go to a lot of cafes and try different coffees, and that's where the the uh, the passion, the the likeness of the coffee started. And then later on, I went on to uh, then then. I had visited Dubai back in 2018 once, and there I had my first vanilla supreme cold brew in Dubai, and I was like literally blown away from my mind. 
and I was like, what what kind of coffee is this? How amazing this coffee is! And I really wanted this to be in India. And at that point of time, cold brew wasn't a very huge market in India. It was not hardly any of the uh, brands were just serving it. And I was like, we have to do something about it. And then later on, I uh, came back, uh, completed my college. was uh, try to understand working and everything with my uh, with my family business and then 2019 somewhere around 2019 i started uh, conceptualizing the idea that uh, you know what we can do about cold brew how we can introduce to uh, cold brew to india so that one of time there was all these kinds of uh, packages uh, ready to like just ready to brew packaging uh, was being sold in india and and i was like this is a this is big too much of a hassle to even do something with uh, cold brew and uh, so i was like my why can't we just make it in a ready drink format already people are doing it all over the world and i would like to do this in india as well and at that kind of time there were no other brands who were doing it so we started our journey back in 2020 went for a farm tour i tried to understand and Coffee deeply how coffee is grown. Went to Sibiliamkal Estate in Chikmagalur, and um, then I try to understand the coffee basic basic coffee knowledge. Then later on, after after that, of course, because of COVID, we had to have to be at least felt uh, in a stealth mode for the next few months. And then January 2021, where uh, to start off with the project, I did. Uh, I did this course from uh, Kapil Shastri from uh, Coffee Board of India, which I am really, really thankful for. Uh, Coffee Board of India, who has helped me build this, like understand coffee even deeper, and network in a way that, uh, like, that's the best way to network for the for before you start with coffee. So I did my Kapil Shastri course from um, uh, from Coffee Board of India in January. Got to understand few people, and then. Around two years to figure out to get these coffees in a can. So, so yeah, what we what we did was uh, what we started was with a cold brew in a can, and make a hundred percent real coffee. So the cold brew is a zero sugar, zero calories, zero preservative cold brew uh, in a can, which uh, was again one of the most flavorful cold brews in the country in a can, and uh, and then we. On uh, in last year, we also introduced India. Three double two, three double two. Yeah, in the <laughs> first Vietnamese style iced coffee in a can, and uh, it was uh, it was being sold like crazy when it comes to Vietnamese iced coffee. It was being loved by everyone. We saw we researched a lot of cafes. We saw that the Vietnamese is the second most sold beverage all over the country. And uh, we were like, why not? Let's just get this in a can. We researched about upon it and found out that there were four brands all over the world actually doing a Vietnamese style cold brew, Vietnamese style coffee in a can. And um, and then somehow with a with a lot of research and everything, we somehow cracked the the formula. And now we do the Vietnamese style cold brew in a can. This is something about oil coffee. Uh, so basically, so then, we, like I told you, we are serving one of the more flavorful, most uh, enjoyable, something that is palatable to everyone in the country, uh, kind of a cold brew. In the so, and then later on, like I said, we developed uh, India's first condensed milk and coffee in a can. We have sold more than eight thousand cans up until now, and have got amazing response, amazing feedback from the people. And we have got uh, we have got we have got uh, feedback like this is one of the best coffees we have ever had. Our Vietnamese is also one of the most balanced coffees that we have had. So that is what what we have been so far. There have been a lot of challenges that we have faced all this time. Uh, of course, it took us a very long time uh, to develop the product. It took us almost two years. So getting a coffee, cold brew coffee in hand, is not not easy. There are a lot of ways. So, getting a shelf life of six months, uh, making making sure that the cool brew stays all right for uh, in all kinds of temperature is also a big hassle. It's not so easy to do that. And um, 
Yeah, and then doing trial, selecting the right kind of deal. So um, I shifted to Bangalore to just understand and work with the best people to do these, uh, make sure that the coffee that we provide is the best that we can do and do not compromise on the quality and taste of the product. So uh, we, I, while I was in Bangalore, I also worked as a barista just to understand coffee even more deeply. And uh, at the coffee roasters, and at the same time, was worth working with people who can help me understand coffee and select the best of the best people in the country. We do a direct trade with the farmers for our coffee, and uh, we, we directly source from the farmers, and we have our own blend for our coffee. And to get this coffee from from scratch, like getting the best out with all the flavors. So, uh, stabilizing a cold brew is not so easy. Um, there is heat involved when you are stabilizing and the coffee, as you guys might know, coffee is a very critical thing. Coffee also is, uh, so once you have stabilized it, there is a lot of uh, process that you have to go into without, you want to do it without preservative, and that really hinders the taste. Making sure the taste was amazing, everything was balanced, it took us few years to just develop the product, that was just a black coffee. Then when we started with black coffee, uh, we were very bullish when we started with that because we thought that, yeah, of course, everybody is going to like it and it is going to be a good thing because uh, the black coffee market is increasing every day. But it turned out to be a little bit of a niche and uh, one second. Excuse me, yeah. Tejas Ji, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, sir, can you just yeah. uh, check on your network, sir, because the sound is not very clear. Uh, can you just... Yeah. Uh, 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 come to an area where the network is slightly better, sir. Yeah, I think my, your uh, what well, just a second, just a second, yes, sir. Yeah, we'll wait, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible now? Uh, yes, sir. It is uh, better now, sir. Please continue, better, sir. Better. All yes, right, sir. Right. yes, sir. So, yes. Um, then we started with, a, like I was saying, then we started with a black coffee, uh, which, will, which turned out to be a niche. And we kind of uh, it, we were facing challenges while scaling up. Then as soon as we understood that, uh, because I, I was very passionate about black coffee, so we did that and then we knew that the uh, am I is it, is it still the is this disturbance? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, okay, Sorry. all right. So, okay. Yes, yes. So then, Thank while you, uh, yes, so then we are doing milk coffee, which everybody likes, but when we are doing milk coffee, then what we have seen there are a lot of uh, so while if you go in. Uh, while while we go to the market and we when we see there are as many brands as you see ninety five percent of the brands are doing flavored coffee or flavored milk. They are not using real coffee to make these beverages. They are using coffee flavors to make these beverages, and that is just hindering the experience of drinking coffee. Uh, I think there there is been some kind of an issue. Yes, there's some disturbance, sir. That's what uh, the participants have uh, mentioned in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can to... just check on your mic, sir, uh, because uh, looks yes, like there yes, is some yes. disturbance still there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, can you guys hear me better now? No. Sorry. I'm so sorry for this. Okay. One second. Uh, I think is 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 this better? Yeah, sir. Now it is better, sir. Now it is. Better. Is it clearer now? It is clearer, sir. Yes. Okay. Better, sir. Yes, yes. yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so sorry for the disturbance. I'll yeah. continue. Yes. Yes, sir. Please continue, sir. 
yes so like uh, like we've seen and uh, uh, all the co- all the packaged coffee is usually not real coffee so when we pivoted into the milk coffee we made sure that we use 100% real coffee 100% high quality beans 100% arabica beans and we made a vietnamese style coffee in a can that was 100% real cold brew with condensed milk in a can and uh, then we then we went on to do went on to do online sales which was again for a beverage buyer it was a little difficult but uh, initially yeah, and then later on pivoted to offline sales as well there and today we in mumbai we are available in 50 general trade sto- uh, stores right now so that's what I've, and for marketing we have done a lot of events like you can you guys can see one of the events that we did uh, was uh, mumbai world coffee conference where we launched our vietnamese style coffee there and um, we have had amazing response for our vietnamese style coffee the, on on the right you can see the uh, world coffee conference we also did mumbai coffee festival for events and had uh, amazing response there as well there was sunday soul sante we did and we also did lilfly so doing events really make a difference because as a founder you get to try to talk to customers directly you get to try to talk to your audience directly and it makes it even better and easier for people to understand your brand better and there is no better way to going and talking to so many people by yourself and them understanding your brand than doing events so events have been one of the best ways to market our product and we have had great amazing amazing response in those events we have got great feedback a lot of you uh, bigger so a lot, while while we did world coffee conference as well all the players from buller to probat to all kinds of uh, companies have came have come in and they have told us that how great our coffee is how great our cold brew is so it has been an amazing response so that is what we have done so far and and i would say that it is not it's not that easy to do a startup but definitely uh, there's nothing impossible there are a lot of things that you can do it's just a idea it's just a thought and then you scaling up is what is needed and the right plan of action just make sure that you guys know what where your uh, where your tp is how to scale up how get the right people network as much as possible and definitely it will it is it will be great for you guys to you know um, doing whatever that you guys want to do so yeah that that's about it that's about uh, what is about old coffees uh, i would hand it over to uh, anand sir again and yeah thank you so much yeah, yeah. Uh, sir uh, we have another 2 minutes so uh, just in case you would like to cover uh, one or two things of the previous slide before challenges uh, just for the benefit of the audience if it is okay with you uh, yes, otherwise sir. we can uh, yes, continue sir. in the it... session yeah. yeah of just course, you can mention i would say yes. challenges uh, challenges what we have faced before starting a brand was there are a lot of challenges that you that come in you have to be very patient when it comes to developing a product take it, like just developing the product took us 2 years that was a black coffee that was a single product and finding the right vendor finding the right people is not so easy but the only thing is that you have to be very patient with whatever you're doing and have conviction in what you're doing but also also always always have feedback uh, always understand what your customers are saying to you and if you have a negative feedback if you somewhere feel that yeah uh, there things are not working for us maybe uh, something is not going all right definitely try to understand take the feedback very seriously and pivot into things that are more easier to sell as soon as possible don't try to be just that no i am doing what i am doing right there are after all all the customer is the is god and customer is what we need to sell our product at the end it is about selling the product and your product should be the right thing so definitely take all kinds of customer feedback as seriously as possible all right sir so that is one of the biggest thing that i would say yes thank you so much thank you tejas ji uh, for uh, the presentation thank uh, you. in case of any other uh, content that you would like to share we can take it up during the combined uh, q and a session uh, after the second uh, speaker's uh, uh, presentation of course, of course. definitely yes sir so uh, for the benefit of the audience uh, uh, yes. we, i just want thank to make so you much. know that
Thank you, sir. And for the benefit of the audience, I would like to add that uh, we'll have a combined Q&A session uh, after the second speaker's uh, presentation gets over. So uh, now I uh, would like to take this opportunity to, to uh, introduce the second speaker of today's session, uh, 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 Mr. Sarana Kumaran. I would request him to kindly uh, uh, keep his video on so that uh, the people can see him. Uh, Mr. Saruna Kumaran is an engineer turned into a climate uh, entrepreneur. His uh, company is on a mission to nourish your skin and the planet through consciously upcycling the would be discarded ingredients into high quality skincare products. He is the founder of the Bean Loop, which is a startup into skincare products manufactured from discarded coffee residue from July 2022 onwards. He looks into uh, R&D marketing and partnerships at the bean loop so on behalf of uh, the ic ccri at coffee board uh, i warmly welcome our second speaker of today's uh, session of the startup stories webinar series 12th april uh, mr sarana kumaran uh, over to you sir and you can share the presentation uh, hello sir thank you so much uh, for inviting So uh, I hope uh, the presentation would be visible. I'll just put it in. So uh, it's just a, uh, yes, sir. thank you, sir. Uh, so yes. thank you so much for inviting uh, me to share our journey. So it's just a short uh, overview about how we started with and where we are currently, what impact we are trying to create. Uh, then we can discuss more in Q and A session. So uh, the journey actually started with uh, you know um, organic waste as a uh, side streams. So uh, in India, uh, almost uh, seventy uh, percent of the waste that solid waste that goes into landfill is uh, wet waste, and most common solution is either composting or biogas production. Uh, either of which is capital in uh, intensive, uh, whether it is very vulnerable to weather uh, changes. And uh, in both these, uh, you know, things, uh, the good food and the bad food or uh, the good food, which has all the value and benefits still intact in it is treated the same way. So that's how we, uh, I came upon the idea of what else can be done. So, uh, if you see in the plastic recycling industry, there are a lot of things or th there are a lot of innovations that have come across, uh, different ways of utilizing the same, uh, of different ways of utilizing the, uh, plastic waste. But in organic waste, the it is still the same. So that's where uh, I started researching more, and I got to know about the spent coffee grounds waste uh, in the cafes. So cafes, after they brew a cup of coffee, each cup generates uh, 20 grams of coffee residue, uh, which is currently uh, you know turning up almost 96,000 tons of coffee residues annually in India alone. Most of which is normally land filled and you know, the story, it gets uh, decomposed and uh, because of that, uh, it releases uh, greenhouse gases causing global warming. So, uh, when I started researching more about the raw material, it still has a lot of value added benefits still in it, like the oils, the antioxidant properties, the exfoliation properties. Uh, so I thought what products can be value added products can be made out of it and that's how i started the bean loop as a, a brand as a startup uh, so here we are basically creating a circular economy closing the loop uh, by collecting these coffee residues uh, processing it and then uh, turning it into uh, skincare products uh, uh, so some of the images you can see like uh, body scrub, body wash, hand wash. Additionally, we uh, make up products in uh, powder format as well, making it more travel friendly uh, and uh, you know, waterless. You know, you are also reducing on the water footprint. Almost we are reducing 80% of water per bottle. So uh, that's how this journey started. Uh, so 
uh, during initially uh, I approached uh, so this started just after lockdown uh, where I approached Starbucks uh, just with my college I card that's what uh, uh, that that time I was uh, first uh, study from home was going on so I just went and showed my I card that for a college project I'm uh, I need some coffee residues that's how I got the first samples trialed with it. Uh, got my friends uh, and family members to try the products. Uh, there were a lot of uh, feedbacks about the products initially. So uh, we worked on it, improved it, and currently uh, we have almost uh, 15 plus SKUs. We have diverted almost 100 plus kgs of coffee residues from the landfill. So that's how it started uh, and uh, we have built partnerships with number of cafes. Uh, so currently we have three cafes uh, installed a solar dryer where we uh, process the coffee residues and uh, interacted with uh, almost uh, 500 plus customers uh, till now. Uh, and talking about uh, the uh, World Coffee Conference and Startup Mahakum where we were a part of. So uh, it was really a great experience. Uh, being there itself uh, gave, gave us a stamp or a, a, you know, a stamp that we are uh, working something towards uh, proper, uh, to, we are serious about it. So that was uh, really great. Uh, talking about startup Mahakum, uh, the uh, the number of, of audience who came in and appreciated the work was really great. Uh, we met a lot of government uh, authorities uh, and also uh, like we did not uh, not only got to interact with customers but a lot of B2B interactions also happen at this place. So that's why offline event still in uh, this date also holds a lot of importance in. Uh, so that's how our journey started uh, during initially there were a lot of challenges. Firstly, we had to crack the collection of coffee residues. So that was the first issue. So how do we establish a partnership? How do we convince a cafe to give us the coffee residue because normally they uh, discard it as a byproduct. Uh, so they were like, why we uh, should give it to you? What you are doing? We don't know. So we I went uh, to a number of cafes in Mumbai, talked to them. Finally, we uh, got in partnership with uh, two of the cafes uh, who uh, were who resonated with our uh, work and they still are uh, with us. Uh, so that's how it started. Then processing it, making it safe for the skin uh, before it could be, um, you know, uh, taking taken it to the customers, and then uh, convincing the customers that. Uh, upcycling or using the coffee residue doesn't mean that we have taken uh, something uh, that is not of value of. Indeed, it has a lot more value. So that we had to prove through different uh, research, uh, talking about the benefit. We made the people try the product at the at our stalls itself. So that's how we tried and convinced more people uh, and uh, still uh, counting on. Uh, so this is a glimpse about our journey and we aim to get uh, more raw material and make uh, the coffee supply chain zero waste. So that's the aim of the bean loop that we started with and we hope to you know, achieve it in the near future as well. So uh, I'm available anytime on uh, either through email or uh, LinkedIn. I'll drop it on uh, the chat box as well. Uh, so that's it about uh, just to give a glimpse. So any more, I'll be happy to answer through a Q&A session as well. Over to Anand, sir. All right. Um, uh, thank you, Saruna ji, for your uh, presentation. Uh, now, uh, since we have slightly uh, completed a bit earlier, we can take uh, as many questions as possible. I would request the audience to kindly uh, go one after the other after uh, by raising their hand and ask the question clearly. And please mention the uh, speaker name to whom you are asking 
the question so that uh, the respective speaker can answer your query. So uh, now over to the audience, and I would request the speaker to uh, take the time to uh, answer uh, each question since we have a, a time available with us. Yes, Mr. Mohan Kumar, sir. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Mohan Kumar, sir, you, you can kindly unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, he is... Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. You have also yeah, posted the... your query in the chat box, I can yeah. see. The same so, question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is Jim. Uh, the question is for you. But cold view can bring a ready to drink. Uh, how are you packing and having a shelf life without preservatives? Sir, kindly answer. So, of course. Um, thank you. That's a great question, Mohan, sir. Uh, I, so, the thing is, that is where it took a lot of time for us because without preservatives, it is not very easy to you know, start to, to, to make sure that the coffee is stable for six months. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of processes nowadays that have come into the play that, uh, that has heat involved in while packaging the product and, uh, uh, while packaging. So once the can is packed, when it is a package, there is heat involved. You go to, you, the, the can goes into a, a, a chamber where there is the, where there is a lot of pressure and heat. And what what happens there is it kills all kinds of bacteria inside the can, and then the, any kind of bacteria or kind, any kind of pathogens or anything the, does not have any room to grow because there's no oxygen. Plus, there the heat has already killed all kind of bacteria if there is any. So that's how we have able to uh, to make sure that the cold brew, the black cold brew that is there, it is zero preservatives. Of course, when it comes to stabilizer, it is made of milk, condensed milk. So it is not that easy to preserve something like that. So we haven't used pre preservatives, but definitely we have used stabilizers to make sure that the acidity of the of the product, when in ambient temperature, when in a longer format, in a in a longer time. The, the acidity of the coffee does not increases because when the coffee when the acidity of the beverage increases it can tend to curdle so we have put stabilizers into the the milk product which is usually there which is present in condensed milk as well so put some stabilizers there that make sure that the coffee is all right for the for the next 6 months so if, about the coffee stabilizing in nitro like cold brew general like normal cold brew uh, like other than uh, milk beverage yes yeah, so just general cold brew i'm telling you it is uh, uh, so the process is called retort you have to retort the product and uh, that retortion is like a pressure cooker uh, you might know how the pressure cooker cooker is right so it is like a pressure cooker the the, the temperature rises to more than 125 degrees celsius for in a in a high pressure environment and that's where all kinds of Bacteria is there and there, the product is stabilized there. And as you mentioned, there's a heat involved while uh, packaging and processing. Uh, yes. Don't you think that it will affect the flavors and it goes stale after some time? Of course, of course. So that is where also, so uh, what happens is once we make the cold brew, we, one of the biggest challenges that we faced was filtration. So we have a proprietary way to filter the coffee. Like we brew a thousand liter cold brew at a time, at one point of time. And when it, when it is thousand liters, we have somewhere close to 100, 120, uh, 120 kg of coffee grounds. So we have a proprietary way uh, that is that we have, may, we have uh, made to filter out the coffee. And once that is filtered out, so we have made sure in terms of the, of the roast of the coffee, that even after heat is involved in, in the coffee, that heat affects of course it is going to affect the coffee but it is affected in such a way that it enhances the flavor so what we wanted was an was a little bit of a citrus flavor of the coffee and that we made sure that we have chosen we have made the right blend of coffee with na naturals coffee with some washed coffee with some honey sun dried we have made, made a blend where after heat is involved it enhances the flavor in terms of it enhances the citrus flavor of the coffee basically Okay, sir, got it. Definitely, okay. yeah, it definitely, I would say it, it definitely affects the coffee flavors, but 
we have we have used it to our uh, liking in a way the, where the coffee can even taste better after heat is involved into it that's what we have done but it is only done after the filtration of the coffee there's no coffee grounds in the coffee at that point of time yes sir uh, was that was that all uh, okay thank you yes sir yes uh, i said thank you now we'll move on to the second query uh, by uh, sri atreya atreya ji can you please uh, hi this is great great present presentation and great product i have seen your product and consumed it as well so uh, did you uh, you mentioned uh, uh, stabilizer so, so did you uh, as per the IF, uh, fsca do you need to mention ins number on the uh, can including the yes yes we we definitely we definitely have to, have to declare all kinds of product that goes into the coffee so we have declared so we we have declared what we have put into the coffee and it is there on the on the back of the can of course we have to do that with fsca as well and it is all uh, uh, only we use stabilizers only verified by the fsci so we don't use any kind of other kind of, uh, any other kinds of stabilizers into it. so is there any settling issue uh, post you put the stabilizers in your uh, coffee no uh, no, post... no so Sorry, sorry, yes, yes, please, please continue. Yeah. So, because uh, I did see, I work on different formulations as well. I did work in Taiwan and many Southeast Asian countries on different beverages. So, okay. um, you know, because it is opaque, it is not uh, easy to see, say, face separation. And because there is a of temperature course. difference, what you said, retorting is appetization. So, uh, yes. you know, if it is other than... Uh, uh, preserving the method uh, in of uh, milk which is uh, which we call uh, uh, pasteurization up other than that is pasteurization. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes then there is there could be a possibility of uh, clostridium botulism poisoning that is the only concern here uh, other than that uh, yeah if you are taking care of uh, any nitrogen filling into the can then uh, i would say that is uh, safe for nitrogen or carbon dioxide whichever is recommended by them so, yes. uh, man, what kind of stabilizers uh, you are going ahead with? So, uh, right now, one of the stabilizers that we use is a uh, and gum, and uh, other one is again that is uh, that is again also it is INS. Uh, one second, I I always forget the number, uh, but it is yeah. Gum. yeah. So, the, yeah, the one of them is a gel and gum, and. Uh, the so what we tend to use is it, it we use it in a very 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 low amount so that you know we also want to be very uh it it shouldn't be harmful or anything because there is a lot of things that have been going on that you know preservatives are so we don't use preservatives as such we use only stabilizers for the same and uh what we use in uh, the other one is there on the packaging there's 418 and 340 so that's what we're using have you tried yeah so i don't know the name of the other other one i know one of them is jalangam so the so it is the manufacturer that provides us is uh, the it is that yeah normally in southeast asia what i have seen is mostly uh, guar uh, if if not guar, guar, guar then, uh, yes yeah guar but, yes, but yes, not yes. but not galan anyway so that is one uh, new thing for me so galan goes yes, for mostly yes, yes. jellies not for drinks yes i know uh, i know i know okay no, so we so what happens here is because we are using condensed milk right condensed milk is already evaporated milk it is very thick so using the right kind of stabilizer is again uh, a problem so we have made sure that you know it's not too easy of course but we it took a lot of research but we had made sure that we that the product is stabilized hey, of course there is there is have you also done accelerated study uh, in order to see uh, six months? Uh, yes, yes. Rate? It will go beyond. Yes, yes, we have done it. It will go beyond, but we only promise six months. It does go beyond. Okay. Yeah. So we are not trying to promise more than six months. So it goes up more than nine months actually, but uh, we still would uh, uh, say that you know six months is the right because it's a milk product and uh, six months is what 
is the right thing because our other product is also six months like uh, even cold brew so after six months definitely there is molding and other kinds of problem when it comes to just the black coffee because of high acidity level so but it is only after six months that i have seen that those problems to occur do you say mold uh, growth is there after six yeah, months in, in 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 the black in the black coffee yes after six months you no know, we have seen it it's seen that in seven or eight months but that should not be the case right because if the spores are there then there is a chance but it will not take any anyway, way i think very, probably very it's not molding it might be uh, if, if it's not molding maybe there's some kind of fermentation happening there because on the seventh and the eighth month when we so we only promised six months until then there was any problem but on the seventh or the eighth month the the taste of the coffee started getting more and more uh, sour so the hence we we don't recommend more than six months and probably you need to again or because it should stay for 18 months uh, if i'm not wrong but if it is milk condensed then uh, did you try with maltodextrin as well or uh, only milk uh no only milk sir okay. but interesting yes. uh, no if it is getting yes, sore yes, sore means for what reason because it is completely covered it is not even tetra pack just to say you know, no 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 so it is the can can is one of the biggest uh, reason for that also is there is no direct sunlight there is there yes, the yes. Uh, the ambient uh, environment the ambient uh, problems that are there that uh, that minimizes a lot instead of a pet or a glass bottle so can is one of the reasons where it stays all right yeah that is what I, it, it is wanting me to think uh, why it is happening anyway interesting yes. good luck yes 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 thank you so much sir thank you yeah uh, thank you sir uh, uh, <clears throat> before we move on to the next question by uh, amrita uh, the, i think there's a query by nishit ji uh, tejas uh, have you been able to raise funds uh, is that the query nishit ji Yes, that and a couple of other questions as well. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tejas ji, can you please answer that query and then uh, follow? Yes, that? yes, yes. So, yeah. we, uh, Nishit ji, yes, we are uh, at this moment. We are trying uh, looking for a seed seed round. Uh, we haven't raised fund. It's all bootstrap under, up until now, and uh, this is all that we have invested our own money into this, and uh, we we do we are looking to raise funds, but uh, not. Uh, very aggressively as of now we are trying to scale up more than uh, raising funds okay and uh, can you also mention a uh, uh, tentative uh, range of the volumes monthly volumes that you are doing right so monthly because we are a very new brand right now so first uh, 6 months it was uh, uh, it was only 3000 cans for the first 6 months but then we scaled up to now we are doing 10000 cans a month right now Okay, and uh, yes. like, uh, do you have to offer any kind of a credit to your uh, dealers, distributors? Yes, yes, we do. What, we is the, what is the credit? So the, bill, the, cycle, the cycle usually is a, a bill to, so it is like a bill to bill cycle. So usually our uh, the payments are cleared in 15 to 20 days. Okay, and approximately yes, how much yes. inventory do you have to, do you have to keep? Uh, with you uh, so when it comes to general trade stores right now we have to keep somewhere close to uh, 2000 to, to 2500 cans like with us so in this general stores we don't dump our product so we only do um, whatever so we try to understand the data what is there so how we place the product where it is going the most so we try to only send the product that that is that that can be replenished in 10 to 15 days that's all so there is not a lot of inventory. We have to only keep a uh, inventory for the for the fifty stores that we have. We need to have somewhere close to, to uh, twelve hundred to fifteen hundred cans, and then we have an extra inventory of fifteen hundred cans. That's how we go about it. Okay, but the credit is only fifteen days. Like the credit is yeah, it is it is a bill to bill. So once we replenish the stock, uh, the the old uh, bill is paid. Okay. Yes. The maximum it goes to is sometimes 45 days, but because some shops don't do very well, but some sh some shops do very well. Okay. We are mostly okay. offline. We have not do we have not been doing online a lot because 
when what we saw as a beverage brand uh, scaling up online has been a little bit of an issue for us because uh, what we have understood is uh, uh, when we are making an on the go product when we are making a grab and go product uh, so online uh, the, uh, online is not being a very great option initially but definitely we have had good repeat customers and since it's a cold uh, coffee or a cold brew, uh, you might be needing to keep it uh, under a cold temperature. So how do you ensure that uh, in GT that can be a challenge? No, no, no. So we don't have to do a cold temperature. It is an, uh, the products are fine in ambient temperature. Okay. Okay. Yes. And, and do you face any challenge to uh, sell the product at a price point of 400 or 400 can be a higher price point? Uh, no, no. Like, we uh, our product than... is for 150. MRP is 150. Okay. 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 What? Yes. I just checked online, maybe somewhere it's 450. No it's a pack of two, pack of four, pack of four, pack of eight, pack of 12, that way. So the MRP of the product oh. is 150. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if the queries are over from Vishaji, then we can move on to the next query, uh, which is from Ms. Amrita. Uh, uh, to Saruna sir, could you elaborate the purpose of installing solar drying system in the cafe itself? Uh, so thank you for the question, ma'am. So, uh, firstly, I would like to clarify that we don't install it at the cafe. We install it in our facility. Uh, so we have uh, done or we have managed the supply chain in such the way that we are able to get the raw material uh, in the minimum time of uh, duration. Uh, such that it doesn't catch any mold uh, and the purpose of using a solar based drying method is uh, we wanted to keep it uh, natural or uh, you know uh, renewable energy we wanted to use at the uh, best uh, so uh, the only time we face issues is uh, during uh, the rainy season currently uh, so that time we have a, a no, uh, or we rent uh, the dryer. Uh, we have a industrial uh, facility from uh, where we go and dry uh, the coffee residues at times whenever we need and we get it. So that's how we are currently managing it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Saruna ji. Uh, 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 moving on, uh, Tejas Sagarwal ji has asked a question for Saruna sir. Tejas ji, you can please mention your question, sir. Hi, hi, Saruna sir. Uh, glad to meet you. I would, I wanted to ask that uh, when you, so like we have a lot of residue of coffee uh, from our cold brews, of course. So, is uh, so I just wanted to ask: Is there a way to to extract oils from the coffee grounds that uh, the spent coffee grounds that we do for cold brew? Yes, so uh, with respect to, uh, so we started with uh, B2C because uh, we saw that as a quick market uh, to enter into. Uh, with respect to oil extraction and other things, I'm just, uh, we are working on it and definitely uh, it is possible. Uh, coffee residues has uh, a lot of oil that is in, intact in it. In fact, when you go through researches and all, uh, it normally tends, uh, tells that while you brew a cup of coffee, only 28% of the coffee value gets into your cup. Rest uh, is still intact, like 72% is still intact in the coffee residue itself. So the whole thing we are working uh, hard and uh, definitely I'll be in touch with you uh, so that we can uh, take this out. Yes, and I think for cold brew it will be higher because it is a cold, uh, cold environment, right? We do three to four degrees Celsius. Yes. So of brewing, so I think there it would be even higher when it comes to the co oil content of cold brew coffee. Definitely, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you, sir. May I quickly ask, uh, uh, what would be the uh, COP for uh, thousand liters at this moment? Cost of production. Yeah. So thousand liters right now. I'm. I am not. I won't be able to give you a exact figure there when it comes to cost of cost of production. But uh, of course, it takes. A, we have to do a sixteen hour brew, right? Uh, we have to brew for 16, 16 hours that we do. 
and uh, there is so the factory takes a chunk of it and a lot of things so usually doing a thousand liter at a time is is a little expensive for us of course hence our product is a little on the more uh, expensive side it's not so easy for us but i i i can maybe give it to you um, in in per, like uh, personally maybe later on if we can have a chat certainly i'll uh... Uh, probably if you drop down your number uh, then we can get in touch even for product development or something else in my email address and my number you can get in touch <laughs> yeah uh, moving on to the next question uh, to saruna sir uh, at what intervals uh, do you procure the coffee residue that coffee grounds from the cafe and do they have any expiry or any time period after the coffee consumption? Uh, yeah, so uh, currently we do it uh, twice a, a week. That's how we manage. Uh, we have partnered with three cafes with uh, which we are able to uh, serve the demand currently. Uh, we currently do it within Mumbai only. So uh, twice uh, and if uh it goes beyond what uh the cafes can manage uh, then we uh do thrice a week as well because during festive seasons during year ends or uh during such period and all the demand suddenly goes up so that time uh it becomes difficult for the cafes to store the uh coffee residue so for that uh we increase the frequency based uh during the peak uh duration uh with respect to uh expiry yes there is a expiry i think that's where our expertise comes in of how we store it how we uh train the cafes and the staff of how they can do it in a proper way uh we are still improving on it we are still not there uh at the hundred percent uh then talking about uh continuing on the same we uh, don't pay the cafes uh so they are uh, discarding the coffee residues and uh, they are happy to give it uh, currently. So uh, we don't normally pay uh, anything at upfront, but the logistics cost is normally uh, taken care uh, by us. So that's the main cost of the reverse logistics cost is uh, that the main cost that we incur. One of the cafe uh, also, uh, you know, does a part of that by uh, contributing of 50% uh, of the reverse logistics cost. So uh, it depends from uh, cafe to cafe uh, how uh, they, uh, you know, see the whole process, how they are uh, able to, uh, know uh see what value we bring it so the cafes also uh, display the products at their end uh proudly telling that we are uh, you know a zero waste cafe and all these products are made uh, with our coffee residues uh they all for one of the cafes the first partners uh, nude food cafe in uh, mumbai's dadar they have we have also created a video for them which they continuously play at their cafe as well so these are some things that uh, you know cafes are also really proud of uh, so uh, when we go to different locations or different cities we are planning on a decentralized model which uh, we are working on uh, i think through world coffee conference we have got a lot of demand particularly from uh, bangalore chennai uh, hyderabad uh, and goa side so we are still working with uh, some of the partners uh, remotely on how we can take this ahead uh, in a, when we go to different cities, but definitely it would be a decentralized model of uh, managing it. Uh, and besides Scrub, as I told, uh, we are working on some other products as well on B2B basis, uh, like oils and other things that could be potentially made. Uh, in skincare range only, we have currently uh, curated uh, 12 uh, to 15 products currently. Uh, not all of them is uh, available online because of its shelf life. Again, uh, you know, uh, going in line with what uh, they just started with uh, of, you know, not using preservatives or uh, to or not using very synthetic pres preservative, which are harmful for the skin or for the environment. Uh, so we keep uh, food based preservatives or uh, and we do some fresh uh, skincare products as well, which uh, we give it, uh, which 
has a shelf life of uh, one to two months. So not all the products are available online, but yeah, currently we have 12 to uh, 13 SKUs. Okay. Thank you, Sarunaji, for the detailed response uh, for the query. Uh, just in case, if somebody wants to contact uh, Sarunaji, I think you can also mention uh, your email ID and mobile number, sir. Yes, for, sir. Uh, any, if in, in case anybody wants to contact uh, uh, him one to one. And uh, I think uh, if uh, there are no other queries, then uh, we can perhaps conclude or we can just wait for one or two. Yeah, I mean, Nishit ji, I think you have raised your hand. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, Sarvana, uh, uh, do you also happen to sell your uh, uh, the skincare line of products uh, offline or is it only online right now? We do a lot of uh, offline events as well. Uh, at the cafes as well, we sell it. Uh, so the cafes, uh, we keep it at the cafes where uh, the customers buy it. Uh, we are in talks with uh, some of the uh, retail stores uh, in Bangalore. Uh, but currently, mostly we are online. Some sustainable websites like Suspire, or Brown Living, and all we are there. Uh, offline completely we haven't gone uh, currently, but yeah, we will be soon uh, in next uh, two to three months. It's in the pipeline. Okay, and approximate volumes monthly, yearly. So currently we are managing almost uh, five to uh, eight kgs of coffee residue per day uh, basis. Uh, that's how we are uh, managing, uh, and yeah. No, no, volumes of uh, the end product, the skincare product. End product, so, uh, you know, uh, with respect to bottles, we normally are doing, uh, you know, uh, 100 to uh, 150 bottles uh, on per day basis we are doing. So, when you say you are doing, these are paid bottles, like these are paid customers who are paying you upfront. Uh, the yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So 150 bottles a day, almost about 4,500 bottles a month. Yes. And what is the average selling price? I'm sorry, I didn't check your website. Uh, so it's approximately 300 rupees. Uh, so the main cost is the reverse logistics cost that we, uh, you know, uh, incur, uh, which we are trying to reduce with the scale of operations. But yeah, uh, the average selling is approximately 300 rupees. 300, and like again, uh, when you sell it to the cafes, they pay they, they pay you upfront or it's on credit basis. Once they sell it to the end product end customer, then they make the payment. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's on the credit basis. We uh, give it on the credit basis only. Uh, so it's uh, when uh, the sale goes, uh, it uh, normally comes. We don't give. Uh, much product as well, like based on the demand, uh, we uh, give firstly some number of bottles and we study the demand which product is going well. Like uh, in cafes, uh, in most of the cafes, people like travelers and all come. So for them, uh, powder, hand wash, uh, then uh, lip scrubs, soaps, uh, these are the most selling things at the cafes. Uh, so we don't keep uh, scrubs, body wash and all uh, at the cafe. So more travel related things, uh, we try and keep it. So we study the demand, uh, we study which product goes uh, fast and then based on that, we keep, uh, we keep the products. Okay, and uh, credit cycle, what would be the credit cycle approximately? So normally it is a uh, month on month basis. So, uh, on that month, uh, end normally we get the payment. Uh, so 30 days, 30 days is the credit period. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, I hope, uh, all the queries have been answered and if there are no other queries, then we will move on to the concluding part of today's webinar session. That is a vote of thanks. I request my colleague, Ms. Vaishnavi to propose a vote of thanks. A very good evening, everyone. 
I extend our sincere gratitude to Mr. Tejas and Mr. Saravana for their enlightening session on the Startup Spark Startup Stories webinar series. On behalf of AIC CCRI, we thank them for sharing their expertise and passion for entrepreneurship. Their contributions are deeply appreciated and we look forward to uh, future collaborations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, one second thank on behalf thank of- Thank you so much. Yes, uh, sir. I'd like to extend my thanks to uh, Coffee Board of India and AIC to give us this opportunity and it was great. I hope a lot of people have learned from, like have got good insights from what we're doing and we would always be very happy to help. Uh, so you guys can reach out to us uh, whenever you feel like. Yeah. Uh, I request uh, all the participants to turn on their video so that we can just take the screenshot uh, for our reference. Yeah. All right. Uh, once again, on behalf of uh, AIC CCRI uh, at Coffee Board, I warmly thank both the speakers, uh, Sri Tejas Agarwalji and uh, Sri Sarana Kumaranji, for their valuable time uh, and their presentation. And we look forward to being in communication with uh, them in the future. And I also thank the participants who have taken their uh, time to. Uh, participate in this uh, webinar, which is the first session in the Startup Stories webinar series being organized by uh, AIC CCRI. Thank you all. And uh, on this note, uh, we can conclude now. <laughs>